Hello and welcome to this video about mechanical design, machined parts, engineering drawings, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, all kinds of good stuff. I'm the self-proclaimed GD&T guy and I wanted to talk to you about this part I got right over here that I designed in SolidWorks. What is this part? I just wanted to make something that was somewhat plausible from my experience and what I see in the world, uh, maybe mostly in optomechanical design or maybe aerospace. The point is what we got here is like a machined aluminum part. You can see it's got a couple dowel pins pressed into it up here in this area here. Down here, it's got some locating features, hole pattern for some bolts. Then back here, we got another pattern of uh, six screw holes in uh, embosses. And so isn't it interesting, I'm just drawn, I'm just thinking right away about the interfaces this part has to other parts. And it's something I really wanna get into today is about how we're gonna define these interfaces, how we're gonna show the relationship between these interfaces. And these are gonna be key to the function of this part. For one thing, it's gonna help us to guarantee that the part is gonna fit with the next parts in the assembly. And for another thing, it's gonna help us to show that those new parts on the stack are gonna be well enough positioned in relation with the rest of the assembly. And we'll do a lot of this through the GD&T system that uses datum reference frames and datum features, which are gonna be the same really as our locating features. And so I also made this drawing. This is a two-sheeter C size. Sheet two here has got a lot of the dimensioning and tolerancing that we're going to spend a lot of time on. But then back in sheet one also has a lot of important information that someone would need to know like at the top when they're going to start to make this part or think about how to inspect it. And then on top of the model and the drawing, I'm also going to talk about some ideas I have for inspection fixtures, you know, whether real or imagined, gauges, uh, things like that that help us to visualize the tolerances. And you'll know you're looking at one of my uh, real or imagined inspection fixtures or gauges because it'll be purple. And so just to take a little tour here around our sheet one, got a title block down here, the distribution statement. Uh, you know, I'd be happy to share this drawing. I'm gonna try to keep it posted on my website. If you want a copy of it, I'll, I'll be happy to give it to you. Also have a look over here to see this block here, which tells us that the drawing is in millimeters and that it's gonna be interpreted in accordance with ASME Y14.5, 2009. Now, if you have something like this on your drawing, that's really good because that means that all the symbols and tolerances and dimensions and everything that we're gonna put all over a drawing, that those mean something now because you're referencing this standard. I put a special little note in here that it's a metric drawing and there's no block tolerances. This is the system you see on some inch drawings where uh, depending on the number of decimal places in a dimension, there's a plus or minus tolerance associated with that. There's no trailing zeros in millimeter drawings. And so that system kind of gets blown up. And you know, you don't need block tolerances, <sighs> block tolerances. But again, by saying that the drawing is to be interpreted in accordance with ASME Y14.5, we also have to be sure that the drawing is correct in accordance with that standard. And that the drawing can be interpreted in accordance with that standard. And that's what we're all about here because our main audience for this drawing is, of course, the inspector. We need to give the inspector a clear path to verifying the geometric requirements of the part. And we need to communicate the geometric requirements of the part in the clearest and most accurate way we can. So let's just keep on scrolling on through. I have a few views in the middle here that are meant to just provide some clarity as to the geometry. Here I have a couple of views with a bunch of reference dimensions. It might help somebody who's quoting this part for a machine shop determine what size of material they need. I have some balloon notes indicating that there's two different items. I put in this table here. This corresponds to one of the general notes we'll talk about in a second. But this just points out that there's two different materials. One is the bulk aluminum that's going to be machined out. And then the second is these two dowel pins that are pressed in. So let's go on up to the general notes. See materials are in table one, breaking sharp edges, anodizing, saying that the dimensions and tolerances apply after anodization, that's important to say. Flag note four is about pressing in the dowel pins. I really wanna to communicate to my supplier that I expect this part to be delivered to me with the pins pressed in. I don't wanna press in the pins myself. 
Note number five is one of these very special notes that everybody needs to have. And this one says, you know, I designed a pretty complicated part. I really don't want to dimension the whole thing. Most of the features are pretty low tolerance. And so I'm not even going to dimension them. I'm just going to say that the CAD geometry is basic. And to all those features, this one millimeter profile tolerance applies. Equally disposed profile tolerance. And note number six is an interesting one. This just says that when we go to inspect the part, we can simulate datum reference frame A primary, B secondary, C tertiary using a custom fixture. So that is sheet one. On sheet two, I hope you can see that I organized these views very carefully so that they're well organized across the page. And I hope also so that the viewer's eyes get drawn to the most important stuff right away. Where is my datum A feature? That's my first step to understanding the rest of this entire part. So when I made this drawing, I put the datum A feature call out right in the top dead center of the drawing, indicating that there's uh, two surfaces, coplanar, found right here on this edge. And then also, probably because I was born and raised reading English left to right, my eye wants to go to the left of the drawing to find out where's my datum B feature, where's my datum C feature. And so here's my datum B feature. And this makes sense because the datum A feature would constrain this part in three degrees of freedom. And then this datum B feature being a cylindrical hole is going to constrain this part in two additional degrees of freedom. I have a really pretty precise uh, size limit, only 30 micron size limit. Depth condition, that's important, a little chamfer. And then I'm calling it out as perfect perpendicularity at maximum material condition related to datum A primary. And then I call the whole the datum B feature. Okay, so where's that slot? Ah, I got a basic dimension to locate it. Then the rest of the slot is detailed in this detail A. Okay, I got a dimension on the width. Uh, it's the same tolerance really as the hole. And by the way, I know that this slot has to be milled. And so maybe you could say, well, they could ream the hole, but at that point, what's the difference? If you're gonna mill the slot, maybe you just mill the hole as well. That way it's all the same setup, it's the same tool, it's the same tolerance. You hit it or you miss it. And hopefully we provide a tolerance that can be hit pretty reliably, right? I don't know if 30 microns is that. I hope so. <laughs> I know it's possible. Talk about the uh, position and the perpendicularity about, for this in just a minute, but I also just wanna show that I've dimensioned the length of the slot end to end, and then given it a perfect position at MMC, just because the fairly large size limit on the length of this, uh, I think it's kind of actually a loose tolerance. And then I gave my uh, 2XR, which just drives some people crazy. But I think if you think about this for more than a couple of seconds, it starts to make sense. This is really the thing you have to write down, 2XR. Okay, so let's go into these uh, geometric tolerances here, the feature control frames under the slot width callout. Well, in some ways, we've already talked about the perfect perpendicularity at maximum material condition. That's the same thing we're doing for the datum B feature hole. But what about this position tolerance? Well, I could have made this zero as well, but I just never feel comfortable with that because to me, this call out is saying something about like how the slot has to be pointed at datum B. And I always just feel like I want to put more tolerance in there than just like the size limit of the slot because the size limit is so small. And so I made an illustration of this with one of my uh, little imaginary uh, gauges, all right? When you look at these and think about these, I want you to imagine these are just exquisitely made. All the flat surfaces are really flat. All the geometry is just perfect. Everything's all squared up just perfect. All the locations of everything is just perfect. This works for us as an imaginary gauge. You know, if it was going to be a real gauge, then it would also have to have tolerances. But those tolerances would have to be of a different order than the tolerances on our part so that they could be something that we use to inspect the part. That's a whole other story. For this one, what I've done is I've made like a datum A simulator, this flat surface a datum B simulator, which is this cylindrical feature. And I size this at 6.05 millimeters diameter, which is the uh, MMC and also the, the related actual mating envelope of uh, the datum B hole, 6.05 millimeters. And then over here on the feature that's meant to pick up on the slot, I made this one at 5.95. So that's the 6.05 number minus that 0 0.1 position tolerance. And so if this gauge was made, and you could imagine that it was made with this 
rectangular piece lined up perfectly against the axis of this feature. And so what would have to happen in order to prove that this part meets the requirements of that callout is we'd have to be able to put down our part down onto that datum B simulator until we make full contact with the datum A simulator. And then that little rectangular piece has to be able to also fit into the slot. And it fits in kind of crossways there, just picking up the important sidewalls of the slot. I'm saying that the sidewalls of the slot, the center plane of that, is the data is datum C, okay? And so the slots are datum C feature. So now we know what our datum A, datum B, and datum C features are, and we can start to construct that uh, all important datum A, B, C uh, datum reference frame. And one of the first places we're going to see that is on the pattern of four mounting holes. These are sizes 6.7 plus 0.3 minus 0.03, which is, I guess, a reasonable size tolerance for a drilled hole. And then I've calculated out that I need this position tolerance of 0.22 at MMC related to datum reference frame ABC, as I'm going to start calling it. And so now here, I'm going to ask you to visualize this datum reference frame as an inspection fixture. So this is actually the same inspection fixture that I mentioned in note six on the drawing. You can see it's got this number. What this has is a datum A simulator, a datum B simulator that's been sized at 6.05, which is the MMB of the datum B feature. And calling off this fixture on the drawing for use in inspection, this is one of the things that really helps is that we can use a cylindrical feature for our datum C simulator instead of having to like pick up that slot in some weird way. We're also getting to a place now where, you know, you may do things really quite differently. and uh, and. These are just my ideas, okay? Uh, this makes sense to me. The one more thing that's uh, really worth pointing out, uh, in addition to those datum simulators, is these like inspection pin sort of things. These are going to verify the location of that pattern of four mounting holes and their size at the virtual condition of those holes. In this case, that's uh, 6.45. And that makes sense because we said that these holes are 6.7 minus 0 0.03. So we have MMC of 6.5. 6.7, and then we subtract 0 0.22, yep, 6.45 virtual condition. And so we're going to be able to simulate datum reference frame ABC and verify the location of those holes. What this looks like is we put the part down onto the datum simulators and then make sure that we are able to get all the way down to the datum A simulator without interference. And then look down here at these virtual condition pins going through the mounting holes. Not a whole lot of clearance around there. But yeah, that's the tolerance right there. You're looking at the tolerance right there in that little gap. That's all we get for these drilled holes. But this fixture is still pretty useful to us because we actually have a lot of features that are tolerance in datum reference frame A, B, C. We said in general note six that any untoleranced feature on here has a one millimeter equally disposed profile tolerance in this datum reference frame. And so you could imagine an inspector clamping this down to the table on their CMM machine take away a part for a minute, indicate in all the datum simulators, establish their zero, 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 and then they're just off to the races on the CMM, touching off points all over this part and verifying that note six. But there are a few more tolerances in that datum reference frame ABC that we definitely wanna talk about too. And the next one that comes to mind is this 30 degree angle surface. So I've given this one a basic angle dimension down to the datum A feature, but then also with basic dimensions, to like the spot where this pin emerges from the surface. I've shown not just the angle, but also where in space is the nominal position of this surface. And I do that partly by having this little uh, broken out section view, which makes it possible for me to draw a little axis to the datum B feature, and then dimension on up to that dial pin, and also just reference dimensions to the center of, of this circular feature. And having shown where exactly this surface is in that datum reference frame uh, Cartesian space, I come down and give it a uh, profile tolerance, referencing datum reference frame ABC, a little bit of a tighter angularity tolerance, same datum reference frame, and then a flatness tolerance with, of course, uh, no datum references being just a form control. But these tolerances getting like progressively tighter as we move through the stack. And then to cap it all off, I'm now calling this surface my datum D feature. Having established that as the datum D feature, I start using that datum D feature in some more callouts for these dowel pins. Here in this uh, auxiliary view, BB, 
I have the call out for a pattern of two dowel pins. I give the size limit as reference. I have my uh, flag four note. I have my table one identifier note telling us this is item two. And then I have this stack of feature control frames underneath it. So let's look at this top feature control frame first, okay? This one is saying that there is like an imaginary tolerance zone, 0 0.4 millimeters in diameter, and it's located inside this datum reference frame ABC. And we know exactly where it is because of all these basic dimensions uh, coming off of the datum B feature, coming off of the datum A feature, including the angle here, including all my little center lines and everything. We can use all these dimensions to know where exactly that tolerance zone, actually these two tolerance zones for the two pins, where those are supposed to be in that Cartesian space of the datum reference frame ABC. So with our part up on the fixture and with the datum simulators all indicated in, the CMM operator hopefully can come in and touch onto this surface and verify all of the profile and angularity and flatness control. And they can also come in and touch on the protruding portions of the pins and verify that those are in that first feature control frame of position control. We usually use these dowel pins because they promise some precision, given like the precision of the size of the dowel pin. But I think, man, this is even a pretty big ask for locating these pins in the data reference frame ABC, I think. It would require some kind of pretty special machine setup or, you know, like a four axis machine tool. And maybe those are everywhere these days. So I think we can put this in the doable but difficult category for machining. Now let's look at this next feature control frame. This is a position tolerance, 0 0.1 millimeters, only referencing D primary. I would just note with this that we should figure out the virtual condition. 4.012 is the MMC plus 0 0.1. So that gives us a 4.112 virtual condition. What this call out is really doing is controlling like the relationship of the two pins within a pattern and then also their relationship to datum D. So this gauge has a datum D simulator. It has two holes there because it's a gauge, they're the exact right distance apart from each other and all that, they're perfectly perpendicular. And then there's size at the virtual condition 4.112. We have to be able to place this gauge down onto the part over the pins and make full contact to the datum D simulator. I'm just gonna go in and make this thing uh, transparent so you can see the tolerance. Can you even see the tiny little gap around that pin? It's not much tolerance, but presumably because the two pins have their holes drilled and everything in the same setup, you know, this should be something that can be achieved as well. We have this perpendicularity. This one applies individually to the dowel pins. I don't think you can have perpendicularity of a pattern of two pins. This is a very tight perpendicularity control to the protruding portion of the dowel pins. And really what it does is it shrinks down the maximum material boundary of these pins when we go to use them as datum features. Because now we can say that the related actual mating envelope of each pin is 4.012 plus 0 0.02, 4.032. So let's just keep that number in mind, 4.032. I have the th pattern of threaded holes, these three threaded holes in a detail, detail C. Here I'm doing something kind of interesting. I have new callouts reference dimensions on these dial pins and uh, on each one of them, I identify this dial pin as being datum E feature and this dial pin as being a datum F feature. And I can do that because I know that the next part that goes on to this interface is going to have a hole corresponding with this pin and a slot corresponding with this pin. So although on this part, these two pins look to be a lot alike and have similar function, there actually is going to be some datum order of precedence here because this one's gonna constrain the next part in two degrees of freedom. This one's only gonna constrain that part in one degree of freedom. I got some basic dimensions indicating what the hole pattern is. And now let's go into the call out for these three threaded holes. These are M3s. There's three holes. Now two of them are through holes and one of them is a blind hole. So that makes this call out a little bit exciting. This pattern of three M3 holes, regardless of the end condition, is gonna have this position tolerance uh, tolerance zone size, 0 0.44 millimeters, applies at MMC, yes, for even for uh, threaded holes, yes, applies at MMC. Because it's threaded holes, you're going to see this projected tolerance zone a lot. I think it's relevant in this case. And then we're referencing datum D as primary, datum E at MMB as secondary, and datum F at MMB 
as tertiary and datum f has also got this translating data modifier. What's the translating data modifier? It's exactly what you would hope to be for a pin that's going to correspond to a slot in the next part. I'll show you just what we mean when we get into the inspection gauge. Okay, so just real quick, take note that our virtual condition for these holes is the three of, from the M3 plus 0.44 virtual condition of 3.44 diameter. And so let's think about what this would look like in inspection. I have this idea for three uh, little thread locators. These have got that M3 thread, and then they would just go into the threaded holes, maybe tighten them in, then back them out a little bit so they're not like snugged in up to any kind of shoulder or anything. And then you have like a precision ground three millimeter diameter inspection uh, cylinder here. Our special gauge would have the 3.44 holes for the virtual condition of those threaded holes. It's going to have a datum D simulator, the flat surface. Datum E simulator is going to be this hole 4.032 diameter. That's the, uh, the MMB size for, that, uh, for the pin. And then we have another 4.032 hole over here. Now uh, this one's on a little sliding mechanism inside a very precise little slot. And then I just put a little screw in there to show that we're like, retaining it in there. But this thing can slide back and forth, right? To verify this position call out for these threaded holes, I mean, you see, we don't even have the datum reference frame ABC simulators anymore. We're just all alone out in the air here with the thread locators and the gauge. So we'll put the thread locators into the holes, and then we'll drop this part down. And our datum simulators have to be able to get on over the pins. This one can slide back and forth, right? Translating datum modifier. And then we need our thread locators to be able to go through those 3.44 holes. And so that's your position tolerance for the threaded holes. So that's how we would have a gauge to inspect uh, those features. Let's look at one last uh, interface on this drawing. This is the one with the six threaded holes up on the six bosses. This one starts with our like primary datum feature, which is going to be G. This represents like the top surface of the bosses. I have a basic dimension, 71 millimeters here off of the datum B feature. And then taking advantage of everything that the world of GD&T, including you know, basic dimensions and uh, the implied 90 rule, I know exactly where in that Cartesian space of datum reference frame ABC these surfaces are supposed to be in. And then giving it a 0 0.8 millimeters equally disposed profile tolerance to that datum reference frame. And so that's you know maybe pretty loose, but a little bit tighter than the one millimeter note six tolerance. And then also in the stack, I give a coplanarity, 0.15. And just make sure everybody knows we're talking about six surfaces and that those six surfaces are the datum G feature. Okay, now I come down to this view projected off of that. Here again, really taking advantage of uh, basic dimensions, center lines, the concept of center planes, all those things. And then take a note, I position this hole and slot, datum B and datum C features, a little offset from the center plane of the part. You know, maybe I did this so that this part can't be installed incorrectly or something. I think still this world of center lines and center planes and basic dimensions is very forgiving, at least in terms of being able to just really define a position in this space. And so I put a five millimeter basic dimension up here to the center plane of the part. And then I continue to reference that center plane really all through several views, including this one down here. The center plane is back. And now I'm dimensioning off that center plane to show where these holes are. And I have to show the location of these holes in that datum reference frame ABC space because I'm going to use datum reference frame ABC in the first in the stack of uh, position tolerance and the uh, hole call out here. So this is saying we have a pattern of six M3 threaded holes. I've got all my end conditions and everything. And then we've got the little stack of feature control frames. The top one is saying that we have a 0 0.8 millimeter diameter tolerance zone. Applies at MMC, projected four millimeters. And then this references datum reference frame ABC. So we get back out our inspection fixture that simulates datum reference frame ABC. Indicate everything in. We know where our zero, zero, zero is. We come around to these threaded holes and install some thread locating pins. And then we verify whether the center axes of these pins are in that 0 0.8 millimeter diameter tolerance zone. And so there is one more position tolerance in this stack. That's this 0 0.44 diameter. Only references datum G as primary. This one is really going to control these holes as a pattern, like within this tolerance here. So this tolerance has got to be tighter than the one above it. 
For this inspection, we're just out in the air. We don't have to be on that fixture with the Datum ABC simulators. We have our thread locators installed. And we're going to have this special gauge, like a little plate here. It has the same pattern of six holes. They're all size 3.44 millimeters, the same as the virtual condition. And so this plate has to be able to go down over the thread locators and sit all the way onto the Datum G feature. You can see the little bit of space around the thread locators, and that is the position tolerance. By controlling the pattern like this, we can help to ensure that the next part is going to fit to this one. And we can also control a little bit like where that next part's going to be in space, which is like overwhelmingly about datum reference frame ABC. But because there's no like locating features for this part that's going to attach to the six threaded holes, we don't have like a new secondary or tertiary datum for that. And that's okay. We're just going to locate it kind of grossly within ABC and then uh, locate the pattern of features more tightly to ensure the interface. So I hope you can see the difference here where this uh, pattern of features appear on the angled surface, have these dowel pins, they have a new secondary and tertiary datum, and then the threaded holes this interface will reference all of those. We don't really have that on these six threaded holes on the back here, so it just works a little bit differently. And so that's what I wanted to show you on the drawing. Um, maybe a few more things to think about here. I think one reason why that drawing works so well is because the CAD model has such good bones for it. Right up at the top of this thing, I have all these sketches that uh, really define these interfaces. And then I also have a sketch that ties them all together and shows where they all are in space. This is before I even get into all the different features to make the geometry. One result of this should be that it should be possible to go in and change some of these dimensions and not destroy the rest of the CAD model and the drawing. And that could be good as you go to make design changes to this part, or if somebody in the future comes along and decides to open it back up again and, and do a save as and make a new version of this thing. You also might notice that a lot of like the origin and the major views in SOLIDWORKS are really true to the datum reference frame ABC. I know for me, it's like super important to think very concretely about these parts and how these locating features are going to work in the assemblies. So I don't want to like fool myself that the front plane is like somehow not on that pinhole. And so that's my drawing for this pedestal part. Hope that helped you out. Do all the things like subscribe, drop me a line, send me an email. Be happy to hear from you. Um, if you can use this drawing for the purposes of good, then uh, I'd be happy to share it with you. If you saw something that was wrong, please let me know. Always trying to make sure that I'm getting the good information out there. Okay. Thanks very much. This is the GDNT guy signing out.